don't move to London unless you want to live with five flatmates or spend more than half of your monthly salary on your rent. Hi, my name is Nora. I'm an immigrant currently living in Antwerp, Belgium. I lived in London for a year in 2019. Back then it was already an incredibly expensive city, but now it has just gotten way, way worse. So today I'm just going to talk about 10 things that you should really know and you should consider before you decide on moving to London. If you like the video, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you like this kind of content. I am going to post videos about every European country that I can cover, that I have friends in or I have lived in. So stay tuned if you are interested in this kind of topic, if you are planning to immigrate, if you are planning to move abroad. So let's get started. First things first, right? Uh, already, I think getting started in the UK or in London is a bit difficult. So first of all, when I got there, I had to register myself to get my national insurance number. So that's the number that you have to give to your employer. That's the, the number that you have to have when you go to the doctor. This basically enables you to get healthcare. However, when you are looking for a job, you need to have not just the NI number, but you already need to have a bank account. However, you can't really open a bank account without having uh, an employer kind of sponsor you or kind of vouch for you. So it's already very difficult to get started on that level. I will share a link in the description uh, how I did it. Um, it's a bank that you can um, open a bank account that you can open online, completely online. It's pretty good. I will share the link below. And of course, you will have to have a phone, right? To, to have people call you, to, to get job interviews, to, to organize everything. It's just nowadays you can't really live without a phone, right? But you won't be able to get a subscription unless you already have a credit score in the UK, which as a newcomer, it's completely impossible, right? So what I did, for example, I had a top-up phone. I'm not sure how they call it in the US, but uh, you have to uh, always put some money on it in order to be able to call people. You can't really use uh, the, the internet uh, on it unless you have a Wi-Fi. So it's uh, pretty much of a hassle. So then we come to housing, finding a place for yourself to stay, right? This is, I think, one of the biggest pain points in the entire UK, actually, but London is especially. So the UK is suffering from a housing crisis at the moment. The prices are going up, up, up. Competition is insane. The prices uh, for housing in London increased by 17% just in 2022. The problem is that there is no rent control in London. So the landlord, landlady, land person just can tell you that they will increase your rent by 20% even. And you can't really do anything unless you want to get evicted. So me, uh, when I was living in London, I lived in Croydon, right? Which is really the outskirts of London. Uh, most uh, UK people would call it like a dodgy area. And even there, if I wanted to rent a studio apartment, that would have cost me more than a thousand pounds a month, which is, is just absolutely crazy. You have to earn so much money or you have to have a partner to live with in order to be able to pay that. So what I had to do was find flatmates and move into a big house with five other flatmates, which I'm over 30, it's not my dream, okay? <laughs> and another problem is that the competition is really, really insane. So I've been watching these reports, I've been hearing from people, the listings, they just disappear in like hours, you can't even have a chance to visit. And most of the people who are trying to rent, uh, they will always try to offer a price that is higher 
um, than the rental price because they know that they don't have a chance of getting it unless they offer a higher uh, price to pay to the owner. I also heard that they have to kind of like send like these motivation letters, pictures of themselves just to, to make sure that they will get chosen. But it's pretty crazy. Uh, apparently there are like 30 to even 90 people at visits sometimes. That's what I've seen from reports. So already just finding a place is really, really difficult. As a newcomer, what can also be a problem for you is that renting a place requires you to give some references. So most likely a landlord or landlady, land person will not accept you unless you have references from previous land persons from the UK. So if you are a newcomer, that's pretty, pretty difficult. So not only is it super, super hard to find a place uh, to rent, to live in London, but the cost of living is also extremely high. This comes, of course, mostly from the rent. The rent that you have to pay is going to be really, really, really high. So you will probably have to do some co-housing, find some flatmates. Um, however, you also have to pay council tax. For the council tax, is something that you pay for the, the apartment, house, studio apartment that you are renting you are paying it to the local authorities and the amount you have to pay is based on uh, the value of the property. There are these different council tax bands that will determine how much you have to pay. If you are a student, you do not have to pay for this at least. But of course, if you are co-housing, you can share this, uh, divide this uh, amount between yourself and your flatmates so that might be a bit of help so the energy prices also went up a lot and food prices also went up because of inflation when i was living there in 2019 i think it was still okay like you just have to know the cheap places the cheap supermarkets where you can shop but if you are going out that's of course gonna cost you a lot more money if you're drinking alcohol that's also gonna cost you a lot more money um, I think when my friends went out uh, to party in London, they spent like at least a hundred pounds, sometimes even 200 pounds in one evening. Public transport in London is also really, really expensive. So if you're gonna have to commute, you also have to calculate the price of your ticket or monthly pass or yearly pass that you're gonna going to have to pay. London is really, really huge and it is divided into zones and if you are going to commute from one zone to the other that's going to cost you a bit more so central london is zone one a bit more outskirts zone two and so on and so on and if you live in the really really outskirts area like i did for example croydon is zone six so then you will have to commute for example from zone six to zone two or zone one that is going to cost you a lot more money than if you are just staying in zone six and just commuting in there. So keep that in mind. Another problem with commuting in London is that in the peak hours, it's really, really a pain. So if you're taking the tube in peak hours, it's like super small, right? Like I think a, a person that's like two meters tall can't even uh, straighten his back or her back and it's just crazy and there's so many people and it's just super crowded and the trains are i have to say also get super super crowded and they are always delayed or there's always some problem i used to have a colleague uh, who was commuting uh, from a bit farther away and uh, she had to take the trains and she was like two hours late almost every day it's it's just crazy i don't know if you want to go through that <laughs> every day unfortunately it's not only the housing market that has a lot of competition it's also the job market right and i do have to say i speak uh, fluent english uh, i have to say my english used to be a lot better when i lived in london and i also lived in scotland so uh, since i live in belgium it's gotten a bit worse because i'm learning uh, dutch 
uh, but when I lived there I really spoke really fluent English and uh, I was looking for, for jobs in my uh, sector which is communications and marketing and every time I had an interview the HR person or the employer would say okay but you are not a native speaker and I felt like it was always a hindrance for me. They would prefer a person who speaks native English even though I can write text just as fine. So what I started doing is I uh, changed my CV. I uh, wrote it as if it were like a, a, a magazine article. Just wrote about my life, just, you know, full sentences, really nice. Um, and then I sent that out to, uh, to the vacancies because I wanted to show them that I can speak fluent English and I can write as well, at least as well as a native speaker. So that got me a job finally, but maybe it's only uh, for my sector because of course for communications it matters a lot that you really, really speak the local language. Maybe you will also run into problems like this. So I think the biggest problem with uh, living in the UK and especially in London is that the cost of living and especially the rents are way out of proportion compared to the salary that you are going to be earning. Even though there has been a significant wage increase in the UK, the minimum wage is around £10 an hour if you are over 25. If you get a job that is more like administration and so on, you might make like 20,000 a year. So that's gonna be like 1,700 a month, right? But that's still not enough to cover your living costs. It's just crazy. So unless you have a partner, it's impossible to live on these salaries. So if you are moving to London, if you get a job offer in London, just please, please check. Unless you are earning at least 30k a year, just don't accept it because you're not going to earn enough money. Just look at it like the, the housing prices, even if you just rent a studio apartment, you will already spend at least a thousand or twelve hundred pounds. And then what? You have 500 pounds to live on? It's crazy. So if you are uh, an immigrant or if you are working in hospitality or if you think that, okay, I'm just going to take a job as a, as a waiter, waitress, um, I'm just going to see what's out there, I'm going to do bartending for a few years. The thing is, you will not earn enough money because these jobs are really, really seasonal. Uh, you won't get many shifts in the in the periods when it's really quiet you know like any time from october november uh, or january february there's basically a lot less traffic everything is a lot more quiet so you won't get any uh, shifts and you won't have any income another thing that i think is really really sad about the uk is that it, its welfare system really sucks. So let's say you get unemployed, there are some unemployment benefits, it's called the job seekers allowance. You can also get uh, something called the universal credit. However, the universal credit, as far as I know, you cannot get it if you live in London or anywhere in England. You can only get it in Scotland, as far as I know. Um, please. UK residents, please correct me if I'm wrong, if you're watching this. So let's have a look at the unemployment benefits, right? How much money would you get if you uh, lost your job? So first of all, it's not even sure that you are eligible for it. So here you can see that if you are over 25 years old, then you will get a weekly allowance of up to around 85 pounds <laughs> so you can do the math right and there is of course an eligibility criteria for this so you can only get unemployment benefit if you have already worked as an employee as you can see here and you have uh, contributed to the national insurance 
ergo you, you pay some taxes and you pay national insurance. And then here are some more criteria for that. So I always felt in London that if I uh, were to, to, to you know, lose the, the, the ground from under my feet, there would not be anyone there to help me. I would be completely left on my own. And I think that's actually pretty true because from outside the UK looks like this fabulous place, right? From the Harry Potter movies, from whatever. But actually there's so many people living in poverty at the moment. It's crazy. If you go to London, you will see homeless people everywhere. I met homeless people who were 20 years old, almost one in four person. Uh, live below the poverty line in the UK. So that's about 15 million people. That's 4 million more than the population of the entire Belgium. That's just, just crazy. So I do have to say here that there are many uh, civil organizations that help a lot, a lot of people. There are many charity organizations, uh, food banks that people can turn to when in need. But unfortunately, in my opinion, they don't really receive a lot of focus or funding from the government itself. However, there are a lot of people who are, you know, trying to help each other out. There are volunteers, there are civilians organizing like, like bus, buses and means of transport for uh, people in rural areas to be able to go to a doctor. So the people are really, really uh, trying to uh, help each other out. And then I think one of the other largest pain points is the healthcare system. So it's called the NHS. And uh, if you are paying the national insurance, then you get to use this NHS, go to the doctor, etc. for free. Which is pretty, pretty great in theory. But the problem is that the NHS has been so underfunded, understaffed, that by now it's literally in crisis. There are waiting lines, um, cancer patients cannot get their treatments in time. Um, people have to wait months for, for really urgent surgeries. Um, people have to live in pain. The problem is, of course, I'm not uh, criticizing the staff at all because they are really doing their best. Uh, I'm actually really feeling for them because they are really, really underpaid. And actually what I heard is that the, the pay of the junior doctors has been cut. <laughs> and, and it's just crazy, like if you cut the pay of the doctors, how do you expect um, other young people, other people to, to join this, this sector, to, to want to spend all their money on, on university to study medicine and, and years of their lives and then just end up with, with such a low pay in such a demanding job. I think it's just crazy and the government really, really has to do something about this because um, the, the staff has been striking, which I completely understand because they are really treated unfairly and the, the waiting lines are just growing even more. So yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be sick in the UK. Okay, so just to talk about less tragic topics social life in the UK. <laughs> so this is, a, this is an interesting question. If I think about where it was easier uh, to make new friends as a newcomer, as an immigrant, uh, was it easier in the UK or was it easier in Belgium? <laughs> I would say it was easier in the UK. However, uh, I feel like those were not, you know, real friendships. It was like drinking buddies, like we went out to the pubs uh, and the pub culture is really, really crazy in the UK. Like most people go drinking almost every night. Um, so I feel like um, in hindsight, like as, as long as I went out drinking with them, then we were friends. And after that, it's just, we just, we just disappeared from each other's lives almost completely. So I feel like like people in the UK, maybe this is like a, an income thing, right? So if you have lower income, then uh, you can't really afford to, I don't know, 
play tennis or, or have a hobby or something like that. But what I experienced it is that people did not really have any of these hobbies or didn't do any of these activities or healthy activities uh, and all their activities were that they would drink uh, at the pub. And a lot of them didn't even like invite each other over to their homes to like cook dinner. Uh, it was just meeting at the pub. And if you didn't go to the pub, then you weren't the part of the circle anymore, which is pretty lonely if you don't want to become an alcoholic, to be honest. <laughs> So that was my experience, but let me know if you if you think otherwise, if you had a different experience. I'm really curious about uh, about it. So this is a topic that I can't not mention, and it is, of course, Brexit. So Brexit uh, has basically uh, made it impossible for uh, European Union citizens like myself to go and work in the UK. The UK is not part of the European single market anymore, so it has been really, really hard on people in uh, business who were trying to, to sell products in the European market. Now there's a lot more administration. Uh, it's also been really hard on trade, so it's been really, really bad for everyone, to be honest. So according to the Financial Times, and I think they got this number from the OECD, from their economic report uh, prepared in June 2022, and they made this forecast uh, about the, the annual GDPs, so the projected uh, annual GDPs for uh, each country. And what they found is uh, that each country were projected to show growth in their GDPs apart from Russia uh, because of the sanctions and the other one is the UK. So that's the thing Brexit really made uh, even uh, the, the residents of UK of the UK poorer because it decreased the value of the pound. I'm not gonna really go into this, but it really, really messed up everything. And, and I'm just really, really scared of the future of, of how how much worse can it get? And then uh, the last thing is, can you even move to the UK? <laughs> so uh, Boris Johnson introduced uh, this point-based immigration system, uh, which basically means that you can uh, only work in the UK uh, if you meet some criteria. So let's have a look at this, right? So of course you have to get a job offer or a, a sponsor that will kind of vouch for you, that will offer you employment. You have to be at a certain level of skills and also you have to speak English, of course. It says at a required level, I'm not really sure what that means. But these three things, you absolutely have to have it. And then if you have a skill or you get a job in some kind of a shortage occupation that will also give you some points. And if you have a PhD in a STEM uh, subject, or if you have a PhD in the subject that is relevant to the job that you are getting. Uh, what is really interesting for me is the salaries, right? So if you have a look, uh, you have to have a certain salary offer, which is great. But if you have a look, this is absolutely tradable so uh, you can if you have a phd for example then you are allowed to get a lower salary um, if you look at here it's it can be as low as uh, about 20k which is if you if you get a job offer like that you have a phd in a stem subject just please don't accept it you're gonna be the most underpaid poorest STEM person ever. It's impossible to live in London from 20k a year. I think the 25k is also very low, to be honest. So I think if it's more than that, then you can accept it. So these were my three points. Uh, just let me know what you think. Uh, to be honest, maybe I was a bit harsh. Uh, it's, it's really not uh, against the, the UK, the people of the UK. I really loved uh, London itself as a, as a city. It's really vibrant, it's really culturally diverse, there's always so much to do. However, what I think is that the government is not handling things 
right. I think that the UK is in dire need of more healthcare funding, of more social housing projects, just just a, a government that will pay attention to the lower income, uh, let's say even the people living in poverty, because at the moment that is, that is not the case. It's not happening. So if you ask me the main problem with the UK, in my opinion, uh, that its constitution really enables a small group of people to make really massive decisions that affect the entire nation. And of course, this small group of people have come from the Tories for 13 years. And of course, these are the, the richest people of the country. So how could they know anything about living on a low income or living in poverty? I just feel like, like if, if your own people, uh, if your own citizens are living in, in poverty, are living uh, in, in conditions like this, and you're not doing anything, you don't care about your own people, like how much care will they show to the immigrants that they are kind of trying to get out of, out of the country or that they are kind of trying to limit uh, to get into the country. So that's, I think that's just some food for thought. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you want to hear from me about another topic. I'm gonna explore a couple more countries if I can. I'm also gonna do a video about the things that I loved about London because there are so many great things about living in London except for the prices, of course. So thank you very much for watching. If you like my video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, then also you can hit the subscribe button. And see you next week. Bye.